you are on board of the USS Atreus and you have been given the mission to explore a new sector of the Dama Quadrant, which I just invented. However, you are being hailed right now by another ship of colonists exploring also the same area, approaching the neutral zone. They say they are under attack by Romulians. What are you going to do? Okay. Star Trek Adventures, uh, well, it's, as I said, a solo role-playing game. That's a game that you're meant to play with yourself. But it comes with an awful lot of buts that I will be describing to you very soon. And just so you know, no spoilers. Because, well, this is a solo thing. You're meant to be doing and making your own thing as you go along. So the spoilers will be your own. So don't worry. No spoilers here at all. The book is gorgeous but if you have taken a look at the unbooking video then you would already know that it is beautifully laid out lovingly illustrated everything is very very easy and simple to see and understand and i absolutely love this bookmark which is something i wish more books came with one thing that struck me when i was taking a look at this book for the first time is the huge team of people who've been involved in this. Um, we get Nathan Dowdo, uh, Jim Scott, Jim Johnson as the project manager, uh, Michael Dismuke as the writer, uh, rule development by Michael Dismuke, Josh Allen, Alison Saibi, uh, Jim Johnson, Samantha Webb, additional writing by Rachel Cruz, Nathan Dowdo, Keith Garrett, John Kennedy, Fred Love, Chris McCarver, Aaron Polier, Jacob Ross, Alice Spader, editing by Jim Johnson, Keith Garrett, Bryce Johnson, canon editing by Scott Pearson, graphic design by Jane Robertson, Ron, Roxanne Thompson, from Paramount Global, Maria Cardi, Brian Lady, and Stephen Selling. And with thanks to Jim Roddenberry, Marion Corby, Scott Pearson, Thomas Marone and the many, many fans who support this game. Thank God they didn't think about naming them too, because my God, that was quite a list. So, now that you know everybody who's written this book and otherwise participating, except of course the many fans who support this game, and please leave it like that. Let's take a look at the book itself. One of the things I was worried about when I started reading this book is that it was just going to be like, you know, a set of tables that you roll some die and it gives you some event and that's the end of it. Well, there is an awful lot of that. But what this game does very, very well is to frame it with a working formula that allows you to take away from that roll find what happens, improvise, roll, find what happens, improvise. And that I liked an awful lot. There is indeed character creation. But before the book goes into character creation itself, it sets very, very nicely what the Star Trek universe is all about. Whether you are a seasoned Star Trek fan or whether you have just arrived because you have taken a look at the recent series that have been going on, like uh, Strange New Worlds or Discovery or even Lower Decks, this book is going to allow you to define exactly what the spirit of Star Trek is all about, but also give you more than a glimpse of what the spirit of the different series of uh, Star Trek are all about so you can decide what you want to do with it. 
One of the beautiful things about Captions Log it, uh, is that it differentiates very nicely between the original series, Discovery, um, and the new generations, uh, Lower Decks, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, the movies, Strange New Worlds, Enterprise. It really takes all the idiosyncrasies of each one of those series and explains briefly, concisely, but very clearly and to the point what they are all about. So you can decide what you want to take from one to the other, or even if you wanted to create your own Star Trek universe and, you know, and take the canon further away. So that is a beautiful thing to do. It explains very clearly about uh, the Federation and money, how the Federation started, what the uh, genome wars were all about, uh, the time wars, how and why Vulcans were so antagonistic towards Earth at the beginning of discovering warp propulsion. All those things are in here. So as a Star Trek fan, to find all those things really was very, very refreshing and beautiful to read. Matthias is uh, clearly making a point of writing very, very well, so everything becomes entertaining to read. So quite frankly, I think even if you aren't a role-playing role -playing gamer, this book, it's a joy to read. So you're going to create all sorts of characters, uh, which let's take a look first of all and see where the character creation reporting for duty, page 71. This is where you create your character. And yes, we have 71 pages of how to get into the Star Trek universe. Captain's Log, it's wanting to put you, the player, in the role of the captain. The captain in Star Trek is being probably, likely, definitely, the most important character of any series. It's been the most charismatic, the most knowledgeable, the character that gets, the gels everyone else together. This is not to say that any other character is not important, but the captain has always been the central figure. And this book puts you in the role of the captain, so that is what you are going to create. In order to create your character, you can to do either by life path, which is like deciding from the get-go what kind of character you have, as in creating your background story, or creation in play, which means that you're going to be discovering about your character as you go along. Either is absolutely perfectly fine. If you have a very good idea of the kind of character you want, what kind of captain or where you come from, or where it's going to go, then the life path is your choice. But if you just want to discover it a little bit, if you are not sure, um, perhaps you want to be introducing flashbacks into your character's life or the story, then, you know, creation in play is exactly the right path to you. So that is very good. Um, you're going to have several attributes. Uh, you're going to have control, daring, fitness, insight and uh, presence and reasons as well. So these are where you're going to allocate a number of points. And you have a limited number of points that you can allocate to start with, but don't worry because there is character progression and therefore you will be able to level them up later on. Once you have that, you will decide on your disciplines, whether you're going to go for uh, command, controls, engineering, security. Uh, this is kind of science, medicine. These are what your character is better at. So, for instance, you can be, I don't know, uh, the doctor in Voyager, that in uh, his journey to become human, they actually become a captain but they still have their medicine background. They may still be captain of a uh, aid ship that goes around, you know, during conflict to help during war times, for instance. So that, that is uh, what you're going to be doing. And then, then you have your focus. Uh, so your focus is going to be, uh, you have a table in here. You can invent your own, by the way, 
but you have a table in here and it can be the arts, uh, mental disciplines, debating, diplomacy, strategy or tactics, intimidation or journalism. Those are the focuses that your character is going to use, you know, um, in order to try and sway your situations in a way that will mean it's more advantageous to you uh, if you're going to have to face a Romulian ambassador who is quite belligerent uh, and you have journalism maybe you have a wealth of knowledge of the news and the history of Romulus so you can actually wow them so they will be more receptive to you but if you have tactics, maybe you can have a conversation about war and then get him to respect you a lot more because, wow, we better not piss off this person. So this is how they're going to be playing. You have loads of focuses for communication, security, engineering, science, medicine, and then you're going to have your values. And when values are what drive your character to become a Star Trek character itself, you know. Um, for example, honorability would be a value of a Klingon. Now, this could be a very good thing because being honorable, it could be an interesting uh, drive to sort out a, a conflict somewhere or to seek justice for something. But, and this is the interesting bit, it can also be a source of problems because maybe being that honourable means that you have to disobey commands from the Almirante. So characters are not necessarily black and white at all. And that I find uh, very, very good. The book very clearly explains as well between life path creation and it gives you plenty of examples and organigrams of how to go about it. You can choose different species, extra species for the next generation. As you can see, there are loads. Choose your setting choose your environment condition if you want to create your own species yes the book doesn't just go strictly into the canon and this is something that I very very much appreciate because it allows you to decide to make your own Star Trek at the end of the day whether you want to follow canon or not the truth is that Star Trek is so ingrained in our pop culture and our common knowledge in our life I don't think I know anybody who's not heard of Star Trek, that it is very normal, that very common, that you want to make it your own. And this book is going to enable you to do that in a way that is still respectful to the original setting of Star Trek in any of its manifestations. So, what else? Ships. I was jumping up and down when I saw this version, this, this, this chapter of the book. Ships are going to have very similar uh, traits and characteristics to characters. They just become basically another character. So every ship is going to have systems and departments. Within system, it's going to have a number of points. So comms, computers, engines, sensors, structure of weapons, and within departments, we're going to have command, comms, security, engineering, uh, science and medicine. And depending on what kind of ship you want to have, they're going to have they're going to be better at some things than others. They also have a scale. So uh, a number of two or three is going to be a small ship. Scale seven is going to be a very big ship. You can go even further than that with a scale nine for a Borg cube. For instance or you could create your very own scale ships all of that is very very much here and yes uh, you have different uh, ships that are iconic and very very emblematic um, like you know the discovery 
this is here. Or uh, the Shepherd class, Miranda class, Akira, Challenger, Freedom, the Defiant is here. <laughs> the Galaxy class for the Enterprise with the new generation is here as well. So uh, the New Orleans for the Voyager is around. Sorry, the Intrepid is the Voyager is here as well. So you have an awful lot of, of them uh, from the Picard era. You're going to have, I mean, loads. This, to me, reading this was just so, so very cool. I absolutely loved it. Every ship is also going to have its traits, its talents. So again, think about ships as some sort of character that you can play with. Talking about characters, um, of course, Star Trek is nothing without teamwork. Uh, part of the Star Trek appeal is the development of the relationships between the crew. And this is something that I wish there was a little bit more emphasis on in this game. Yes, you can indeed create NPCs. Yes, even though this book is called Captain's Log, it doesn't mean that you cannot create uh, a chief engineering or a chief medical officer or an admiral. You can create all those characters. But the one thing that I would recommend on this game is not just to create your character, but to do a number of characters, like four or five, that could act as semi-NPCs that could help you uh, with whatever it is you have to do. So your captain doesn't have to be good at everything, and you can deploy any other character that may be good for you uh, for whatever just for storytelling purposes. Yes, the game does mention that. I wish there was a little bit more emphasis on that in a later chapter that I will talk about you in, I'll talk to you about in a minute. So uh, then you get um, the rules of play. Now, I was quite about the rules because to be perfectly honest, when I first read the 2D20 system in the Conan game, I found it a little bit heavy. However, if you are in the same position that I was, please get this book. Captain's Log uses a simplified system of the 2D20. One thing I also notice is that you have to get to page 180 to get to the rules of play. That is a huge amount of information before you even know why you need this and how you're going to use it. So, what have they done with the 2D20 system? Well, they have simplified it somewhat and made it actually very approachable. You're going to need two D20s, as the name of the system goes. And you're going to put together the two scores that you're going to need in order to uh, roll and see if you're successful or not when to roll when being unsuccessful could have adverse consequences. That's it. It is as simple as that. If you are not sure, Captain's Log provides with a probability matrix at the end of the book that you can roll on and decide, well, yeah, this, this is something problematic or this is what's going to happen. And that will help you guide your story quite a little bit. So let's say that you got to roll diplomacy and communications and you have a 13, you are going to roll both dice and you need to roll under your score. So I roll now and I get a 20 and a 4. I only roll one under. That is a success. That's it. There could be circumstances, though, that make it difficult and therefore you need both successes in order to succeed at your particular task. And that means that you will obtain a threat. A threat is something that plays adversely, but that you don't control. And this is something else that's very good about this game, and is that not everything is left to the player to develop. The game is going to give you situations where, without you wanting or knowing how or what, it's going to put that little obstacle that you have to work your story around it. Yes, of course, you can fudge. But then, in this particular case, what would be the point of this? If you roll both dice under your score, 
then you gain a momentum and a momentum you can use to get rid of a threat to get an extra success later on to get an advantage that you otherwise may not have to re-roll one die you can use it in several ways this differs from the momentum and threat dies of the 2d20 full system in the Star Trek or any other Modifius game that it is simpler. I mean, what I have explained is pretty much it. There isn't a lot more to it. There aren't an awful lot of momentums that you can and then you have your own momentum plus the pool of momentum plus the thread and the thread you can take one and then when the GM uses a thread it puts a moment. None of that. This is super simple. For the combat, super simple you get three wounds up to three wounds your character is out of commission that doesn't mean that he's dead it simply means that he's out of commission so that is an obstacle that you have to surmount and that's why having some semi npcs around mean that perhaps the next episode is uh, you know setting up the rescue mission for the captain who's been captured by whoever wounded them three times for example as you can see there is an awful lot now what I liked the most about this game, though, came at the very, very end. One of the things that, um, when I play a solo game or when I have tried them, there isn't enough emphasis on the structure of the story itself. Because of this game being focused on just one person, it mostly leans on the monomyth, the hero's journey. But you can change the hero's journey formula so challenges come at one point or another or perhaps the flashbacks are the call to the adventure and perhaps the epitome you know the epilogue is something completely different it comes at the end this book does very very good job of introducing you to that formula with enough flexibility and freedom that you will not feel constrained to go one step after the other and seeing that all adventures are going to be pretty much the same. I still wish though, and I hope that this is something they are going to address in future supplements, that they had gone more into how to develop the relationships. Asian storytelling techniques are well better suited than the monomyth to do these sort of things. So, yes, although things like the Shehov's blade is, interest, is uh, introduced, Navaja de Shehov, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, as we say in Spanish, um, I feel it needs a little bit more to promote the teamwork that it is so prevalent in Star Trek. But what a beautifully written, well crafted, and very very clear chapter this is. I loved it. Plenty of examples, plenty of ways to structure the three-act structure of the story and divide it, plenty of ways to use a marker to get some challenges and some milestones so you know more or less where you're going great ideas to set up, you know, these are milestones I want to go toward, how am I going to do this? I really liked how this gave me not just a sequence for a story, but a flexible structure that I can play with as and when I want and make my own story in my own way. That was brilliant. I loved it. And at the very, very end of the book, we get an awful lot of tables that are going to describe to us and are going to tell us what kind of things we can do. So if we don't know what mission, then we're going to roll AD20. And this is the kind of mission. Is it going to be aid and relief? Is it a conspiracy? Is it a deep space exploration? Is it diplomacy, defense, first contact, planetary, blah, 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 blah. There are loads and loads. Themes, is there an incident, uh, is there going to be well, a living ship, a nest, advantages and complications, we're going to see encounters and probability matrices for this space, abandoned places, uh, different reality of time, inhabitant planets, space current civilization, how to spend the momentum and what to the role, 
trade opportunities. As you can see, there is such a wealth of possibilities that you are not going to go wrong with this at all. There are tons and tons and tons and tons and tons. So, this is a long review, I know, I understand, but believe you me, this game deserves an awful lot of attention. If you are a Star Trek fan, this book is for you because it gives a really different insight as to how Star Trek is created and what it can contain or not. If you are a Star Trek, the RPG, you know, with your friend, the non-solo, this is for you because it can help you create adventures easily and you can play with the rule these rules with your friends there's a little bit of information in here about how to play with other friends and, and make it a multiplayer book a multiplayer game but it's not what this game is made for if you are an rpg player and science fiction and you want to create your own adventures this is a beautifully crafted and engineered engine that will allow you to do just that in just a couple of hours and you will have a fully fledged adventure that you can deploy with your friends and off we go so i cannot recommend this enough yes i wish there was a little bit more emphasis in the team building and character development of the npcs yes i wish there was a little bit different storytelling techniques than the mono myth but those are fairly minor issues i have with it because this is such a well-rounded complete and beautifully written book that if you ever need a solo RPG this could probably scratch that itch for years to come. If you have already played this game or bought it already or if you have any questions please do let me know because I would love to hear what you have to say. Meanwhile thank you very much indeed for being there and until the next time I will talk to you very, very soon. Take care, live long and prosper.